Welcome everybody to the Legendarium Podcast. It's a weekend edition, and uh, this time we're going a little bit outside of our norm because I am not uh, your typical interviewer. That's not what we've done historically on the show, but we're dipping our toes in the water, uh, and I'm glad you're joining us here today. I'm Craig Hanks, your host, and with me today is one of my favorite artists, Miranda Meeks. Miranda, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. I, I hope you don't mind if I just start by laying my cards out, that I'm a huge fan. You know, when we have somebody who's relatively local, you're about an hour down the street. Sometimes mm -hmm. I like to encourage them to come into the studio, but I might have been embarrassed because I have so many of your pieces up on the wall. <laughs> um, so. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I speak for a lot of our listeners as well when I say that uh, that I'm a big fan of yours. You're one of my favorites. Um so well, thank you. Appreciate you're, that. You're very welcome. Yeah, if you can't handle compliments, then uh, this is going to be a rough uh, few minutes for you. <laughs> I'll just leave now. <laughs> <laughs> so you, the, the way that people would know you, at least uh, the way that our listeners would probably know you, mm -hmm. is as a cover illustrator for Brandon Sanderson. You've done several of his covers. Those would be the things I think that a lot of our listeners would recognize right mm -hmm. off the bat. But... Um, I, I would want them to go check out more of your stuff. So you can go to MirandaMeeks.com uh, and right there on the front page, you can see a lot of uh, Miranda's work. And I would encourage you to go check that out, especially if you're in a position as you're listening to this where you can go to the website and look at a few of the things that we're talking about. You know, we may describe a few of them, but it's nice if you can go look at them. Definitely check them out later. And also, don't forget, if you're there, you can click on a special tab that says Nocturne Project, or you can go straight to nocturnebook.com. And Miranda, you are working on an art book that is due to release late next year, right? Yes, that's correct. So tell Very me more excited. about that art book. Yeah, what, what's, uh, what's going into it? What are you working on? Yeah, it's, uh, it's an art book. It's basically a collection of images that revolve around... Um, nighttime i've always been always been really fascinated about uh nighttime in general and i feel like there's a lot of beauty in it and i i wanted to highlight that in this uh book that's coming out next year well that is that is the defining feature of your work i would think or the defining characteristic of it is i would use the word dark but mm -hmm. i that that word that simple one syllable can come with a lot of extra baggage and connotation yes. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of your work, I think, escapes what that connotation is while retaining mm -hmm. the word dark. It, does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. I I try to, it's almost focusing on the positive and the beautiful side of the darkness that, um, that I really try to focus on. So I, uh, with a lot of my work, I, I steer clear from anything that's too, disturbing uh but i like it when it's a little bit edgy and it's a little it makes you question and that was my whole purpose is it for the viewer to uh ask questions while they're looking at a piece and to feel feel things and feel emotions uh, and i try to walk that line when i'm uh, painting. So. That's yeah. I love that you used uh, that word disturbing and it does stay away from that i i mm -hmm. also when I think of darkness, sometimes I think of it gets into we think of grim dark literature and it gets violent, uh, yes. and there's there's no violence that I can detect uh, except yeah, maybe some of the implicit kind of uh, stuff that you know you maybe somebody could read into it, but it's not really right. Yeah. Right, it's not a it's not explicit or graphic or, and I recognize that there is a place for that in art in general, uh, but that's just not where my heart is. And I try to, I like to tell stories with my art. And even if there is uh, violence that I'm trying to depict, it might be before or after. It's not the scene of it. So uh, anyway, yeah. No, that's great. So tell me a little bit now that we're getting into the work itself. Tell me a little bit about your background, how you came mm -hmm. to this style, um, how you came to art generally. Okay, yeah. So uh, I've always been drawing ever since I was little. Uh, I've always liked kind of weird things. I remember loving snakes and uh, all these animals. And uh, eventually I went to Brigham Young University for school and I decided to go into illustration. Uh, and when I graduated, I had a portfolio, but it wasn't 
obviously where it was today. I experimented a lot with different styles and I wanted to do children's books for a while. And that's probably good that I didn't end up going in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I graduated and I was waiting for client work to come in. So I started making personal pieces and I'd make, make each piece and then I'd publish it on the internet. And, um, eventually it, it kind of snowballed from there. So. And how long have you been doing this? Um, let's see. So I started uh, about six years ago after my daughter was born. So yeah, it's been about six years professionally. Uh -huh. uh, the first couple years, it wasn't amazing, but after a few years of doing that, it it's picked up and it's been really great ever since. Now you say it's been six years professionally, and I, I want to dig into this timeline mm -hmm. just a little bit because mm -hmm. I hit up our listeners for questions, any questions that they would want to ask you or want me to ask you. And okay. um, one of the themes there was, you know, if I'm a beginner and I want to up my game, any tips to improve? What was your, you know, what was your timeline? Uh, and so you yes. say it's been about six years professionally, and I'm looking at your stuff, going, well, dang, if I can get there in six years that's great but <laughs> were you doing this you know all through drawing stuff all through junior high and high school and practicing yes. that mm -hmm. since you were a kid yeah exactly so basically drawing my whole life and uh, I wasn't amazing or anything but I loved doing it and that's what mattered is I kept kept practicing uh all during that time and I was and I was going to school and uh building those skills before I jumped in um, with freelancing. So I had a lot of prep time before I just decided to jump in. Yeah. Not saying you can't just jump in. I've, I know quite a few people that had no prior experience with drawing or practicing. Uh, but the pool was just a little bit deeper when they jumped in beforehand, if that makes sense. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're forcing yourself to learn how to swim, right? To continue yeah. that analogy. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, very good. Much. Well, tell me a little bit about your process as you are working mm -hmm. on a piece, as you start it, as you work on it. I mean, do you, do you listen to music? Is there a headspace that you're looking for before you start to tell me a little bit about it? start to finish uh, one piece? Yeah. Yeah. It kind of depends, um, whether I'm doing a book cover or a personal piece, it doesn't change that much, but there's little differences between, is there one that you'd like to hear about in particular? No, or... not necessarily. I'm, I'm looking for more general, a general process. Okay. So generally, uh, I start with sketches. I, I feel like it's a great way to get the ideas just down on the paper and you're not precious at this point. You're just getting them down. Uh, so you make a lot of little sketches. Uh, something else I like to do, especially if it's a book cover is I like to read through the book and I like to write down notes, uh, and words that are triggering uh, images in my head. And that helps me to get down a lot of different ideas. <clears throat> and then after that point, I will either turn in the sketches for the client, if there is a client. If not, I just continue the process of refining the image. Uh, about at this point, I like to do like a reference shoot so what I'll do is I'll find a model, either myself or um, a friend, and we'll try to get the image as close as possible to what I'm painting. And that helps because it gives me a lot of details that I otherwise won't think about. So I use that reference and photo shoot to help inform my decision-making process. And then I just go from there. And it usually takes anywhere between 20 to 40 hours, depending on the complexity of the image. So that's roughly the whole process and what it's like. And do you prefer one or the other when you mention commissions, covers mm -hmm. uh, versus personal pieces? Is there something you find more rewarding or challenging? Um, you know, it's pretty even. I actually really enjoy the process of working with people because I like to get their input. It feels more like a collaboration, uh, and it, it's a really fulfilling process. Uh, but it's also nice to go and do my personal work because I can get those ideas down on paper that I've been um, holding in for a while, and it's a way of expression that's uh, it's not that it's hard to get that in client work, but it's just different. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. 
And when we're speaking of uh, working with authors, you do a lot of commissions. Is it mostly covers? Are you asked to do any other illustrations? Um, it is almost always covers. Uh, I, every once in a while, I'll do an interior uh, illustration, but it's it's basically book covers. Okay. So, and and this is uh, another listener question uh, from our Discord community. Uh, are there any authors that you've worked with whose work really stood out to you, who you might recommend that people check out? Um, yeah, uh, if I'm being honest, the first that comes to mind is Brandon Sanderson. Um, sure. I've, <laughs> I've read most of his books, and I absolutely love them, and I feel a really strong connection with those books and those characters. So I, of course, would recommend those. Uh, another author I'd like to recommend is um, N.K. Jemison. She did the Broken Earth trilogy. Sure. I And those are amazing books, and, and they're they're unique and they're different, and I really love um, love the storyline in those. So I would absolutely recommend that series as well. Is that one? Uh, is that one that you've had a chance to work on, or is this just a favorite of yours? Uh, this is one that I got to do the three covers for. I worked with Subterranean Press to make a limited edition. Uh, series of these covers so I did get to work on them and oh, that's I was, great I'm um, honored to be able to do that so so tell me about what it's like to consume a piece of literature as an artist knowing that you're going to need to uh, create a cover for this uh, how does this change the way that you approach reading something uh, you know versus just sitting down to read and enjoy is there a difference for you uh, yeah, there is a difference. I, I feel like when I'm going into knowing I'm doing the cover for it, it's a little more pressure <laughs> because <laughs> I want to be able to uh, give a visual and bring life to these characters in this story um, to the viewers in a way or to the readers in a different way. So often what I'll have to do differently is I'll just have to take more notes while I'm reading. I'll highlight passages if it's a physical copy. Um, and just trying to keep up with the visual. So if there's a scene that strikes me, I'll have to write that down. And so it's really more of a note taking process and just trying to find uh, the little details that the readers will appreciate as they're going through the book uh, that I can include on the cover as well. So it's kind of a um, a reward for the readers that have uh, finished the book and they know the little details that <laughs> maybe a passerby wouldn't notice. And so. do you, uh, are you concerned at all about spoiling any aspects of stories? I know some people talk about this with cover covers I oh, have yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, actually, that is a big concern of mine. So I, I usually will, I'll read the book and I will try to talk with the art director and the publisher and make sure you know, is this too spoilery? Is this going to give away anything? So it's a fine line because you want to give hints into the story and you want to accurately convey the story, but uh, you obviously don't want to give anything away before the reader is even starting the book. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, let's, uh, let's move away from the books for just a moment. We may come back to that, but I wanted okay. to... Uh, so I've got your website pulled up. Again, I, I encourage mm -hmm. people to do this as they're listening to this episode, uh, mirandameeks.com, and you can go right there to the front page and look at a, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about here. Um, but I, I wanted to ask you about a few of these specifically because they are okay. so either evocative or popular uh, or possibly representative of mm -hmm. you as an artist. Now, the one that I see the most, the one that, you know, when I see you at conventions or if I see people reference your work and they want to, uh, you know, throw something onto a social media post or something, mm -hmm. is one called Consume. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one where it's uh, it, you've got like a wolf, kind of, it looks like it's howling. It's almost breathing smoke out of this howling mouth. And then there are two hands coming out as though someone is either trying to climb out or has just been <laughs> swallowed whole. I'm not sure which, but it is, uh, it, this is the one that I see most often. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that track? Is this an especially popular one of yours? It is. It stands out um, more than the other ones for sure. And it's probably the most popular print that I sell at conventions. 
And uh, now, how do you feel about this? I, I'm thinking of pop stars who come up with, you know, the, the great single that they can never quite <laughs> shake, you know? Yeah. <laughs> was, how do you feel about this being your most popular work? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a strange feeling because it does kind of feel like that. I make new pieces and this is still the one that uh, resonates the most with people, but it's it's not a bad thing, and I. it's really an honor that it does resonate with so many people. I think the challenge now is trying to find out what about this piece uh, sparks that interest so much more than the other pieces. And so it's been interesting, especially working on personal work, just trying to capture that same feeling or mood uh, of this image in particular. Yeah. Well, it is really great. Oh, so here's Thank another you. one. Uh, right next to this on the website, there are uh, two pictures of women holding animals. Now, the one I'm focused <laughs> in on is called mm -hmm. Hunger. Or no, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Is that the right one? Yes, it is. Hunger. The red one. It's, yeah. it's got a, it's a woman um, holding a lamb. It, so it's, at first mm -hmm. glance, it's quite a pleasant picture. It's, you know, got this cute little lamb. Uh, but then you notice the woman is wearing a, a wolf's head headdress and it's titled Hunger. And it and so mm -hmm. you just at first glance it's one thing, but then like so many of your pieces, you you think about it for just a moment and you dig into it and you go, oh oh, why? Yeah, there's a deeper <laughs> story wonder, here than yeah. Yeah, I wonder what this is all about. Um, tell me about your relationship with that piece. Um, yeah, that was I especially like this piece. I did it for uh, around Halloween, so I think I was feeling kind of spooky and dark anyway. Uh, but I like that idea that you know things aren't always what they seem. And the longer you look, the more you realize that there is a deeper story being told than uh, what's on the what's being presented to you. And the one about this is I I like the idea of like a beautiful woman or who looks delicate and this um, cute little lamb, but maybe she doesn't have the best intentions with this lamb. Uh, I just I like the idea that we can tell a deeper story uh, the further you delve into an image. So, yeah. And it's, it's definitely a Halloween piece. <laughs> and, and it's also quite different from the others in its coloring. Um, yeah. It's it's a little, uh, what, redder or mm -hmm. something? I don't, I don't know exactly quite how to describe it. Again, people need to <laughs> go look at these while yeah. we're talking about it. Uh, but the last one that uh, I wanted to bring up is called Uncertainty. And mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about this because it what it looks like to me and and I'll try to describe it again and there's a another young woman she's kind of her eyes are wide she's clutching her mouth and it looks like she's falling down through a uh, smoky misty something mm -hmm. uh, and teeth are floating away from her oh my gosh you know then you <laughs> then there's the that's the that's that edge that you're talking about skating right now yes. we're getting mm -hmm. into the darkness uh, possibly into something disturbing but what this reminds me of is people talking about dreams in which they lose their teeth is that yeah. what we're going after here yeah it's that's exactly right it was actually for a gallery show that i did uh called midnight for light great art lab and the whole theme was to represent dreams or nightmares and that's exactly what it is and all growing up i had dreams of losing your teeth and it's such a common dream but it's so disturbing when you're in the middle of it and it feels so real and then you wake up with relief that all your teeth are still in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to convey that because it's so common and a lot of people resonated with that as well so it was it was a fun piece and I included the smoky aspect because that's what it feels like in the dream it's nothing feels really solid or concrete and yeah. it feels kind of like you're falling backwards a little bit so well, one of the things that I like about this piece and so many of your other ones as well is that uh, a character in the piece is kind of still um, the character mm -hmm. isn't necessarily in motion but something right. about the piece everything around the character is in motion and mm -hmm. so you get this great sense of motion from the piece, but the mm -hmm. character kind of has a sense of stillness about them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I like, uh, there's a lot of artists that are able to convey that feeling of action and movement and motion very well. Uh, and I've always really admired them. But I, I find a lot of uh, peace and quiet in the still moments. So almost 
like that feeling when you're taking in a breath, you know, you're, you're drawing it in and it's quiet. And so that's what I also try to convey in my work, which is why you're probably sensing that sense of stillness and, uh, and peace. So, well, it's good to know that I'm at least on the right track. <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, <laughs> That's good. So, let's do one more piece, but I'm actually going to kick it to you and ask which okay. which work of yours that's here, especially on the front page of your website that people can mm -hmm. go see, which one of yours do you feel like sums you up the best? The one that you think represents you the best? I think. The one that represents me the best is um, a piece called The Reaper. It's a horizontal piece, and it's uh, dark blue colors. And uh, this one, I I feel like it represents me in the way that it is it is telling a story. Uh, but I try to insert both that sense of gloom and darkness, but also there is that glimmer of hope. You know, there's the moon, and the sky is a bright night sky and uh, I try to really convey that in a lot of my pieces that there is there is darkness in our lives but there is also beauty and I'm trying to find that connection between the two and I think they can coexist really wonderfully uh, if we just look a little bit closer yeah, yeah I, I also that one stuck out to me when I saw your booth at a convention of I don't know a couple of years ago probably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and that one really did stick out. So that's a great choice. Oh, um, good. Thank you. And, well, yes, here I am telling you. Yeah, okay, whatever. No. We're going to leave it there. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's um, let's go back then to some of the book work that you've done. You mentioned mm -hmm. that you, you have done a lot of Sanderson stuff. You've enjoyed that. Um, yeah. I was speaking with, I believe it was your sister um, over the weekend mm -hmm. when I saw you at the FanX convention. Um, and we were talking a little bit about the Sanderson work that you've done. And somebody else at the booth said something about, oh, I'd love to see more uh, Stormlight work. You know, I think you've done one thing for Stormlight that I can recall. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but you've done quite a few things for his Mistborn work, especially. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was reflecting on that and thinking that, well, you know, when you look at the rest of her stuff, Mistborn just visually fits well. Uh, people yes. are. If people are somehow unfamiliar with this, it's a world in which there's lots of uh, the ash, uh, gray skies, and dead mm -hmm. plants, <laughs> and you know, yeah. kind of that very dark atmosphere lends itself yep. to your work well. Um, but then there's Stormlight, which is arguably his more popular work these days. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that? And would you like to work on that more? Um, I would. I I feel like Mistborn was the the is is uh, probably the closest to my heart. I like you said. I love the characters and I love the visual and the uh, world that that's built in. But I've been getting into the Stormlight series lately, and I and that one has been really growing on me. And I've really fallen uh, in love with it and the characters. And so I'm. I would like to do more work eventually for that series. Uh, but yeah, Stormlight in particular. It's something that has grown grown on me a lot over the years and i've fallen in love with it and i'm looking forward to at some point doing more work for that series right well there okay so we're going to play a little game here there are three okay. main characters in stormlight uh, mm -hmm. there's uh, kaladin shallan and dalinar on the count yes. of three we're both going to say our favorite of those three characters Okay. And I've got I've got uh, money on the table that it's going to match. All right, so three, okay. two, one, Shalon. Shalon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, I something about her character is she's actually uh, somewhat reminiscent of Vin in some ways. Uh huh. Uh, and so I know that you're a big fan of of Vin from oh, Mistborn, yeah. and so that makes sense that she would be your favorite. Yeah. There. I I really like the uh, character development that she went through as well, especially in. Oathbringer. I feel like uh, she she goes through a lot of things in that book, and she becomes uh, personable and easy to connect to for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, I loved her development in the books. Uh, I mean, all of them. <laughs> it's hard because she's my favorite only by a little bit, but she is so. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I yeah. feel like I'm in that same boat with you there. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
let's uh, so let's start to wrap this up. But I do want to uh, encourage people once again go to MirandaMeeks.com or go straight to nocturnbook.com for the art book. So this isn't out yet. We're still at least a year from release on that. Correct. But people mm-hmm. can get updates, and I, I assume there's a mailing list or something that they can sign up for. Yes, uh, yep. and I'll be sure to let people know when it's available. And one thing I would encourage is not just people who are fans of art, but I know that a lot of our listeners are aspiring writers as well. Mm-hmm. And for... For a writer, obviously, an artist can do great work as far as illustrating and making that cover and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, for you on your side of things, uh, a writer can be a great friend in that they are creating a scene or a character that you want to convey and that's inspirational and all that. Um, but I would actually encourage uh, aspiring or existing writers to check out your stuff and uh, maybe dip into this forthcoming art book because I think work like yours can be a writer's best friend because it is so uh, evocative and atmospheric mm-hmm. and, and suggestive of, of uh, you know, various moods and, and themes and whatnot. The, I go back to that piece I mentioned, Hunger, the woman with the wolf's head headdress holding the lamb. You know, there's, there's a lot of inspiration that a writer could take out of this stuff, and I think you've really nailed that. No, oh, well, thank you. I, it's funny because I, I feel the same way about writers. You know, they do something that's amazing, and I, I can't. It feels like magic to me. I don't know how they do it and how complicated it is. And I think it's a, it's wonderful when I get to be, when I am able to collaborate with um, a writer and the worlds that they create. And I can, I can provide the visual, but it's, it's, it's nice working with them because of that. Um, collaborative nature. Yeah, It's really fulfilling and rewarding. Well, Miranda, thank you so much for coming on the show and for giving us a little glimpse into your work and into your mind. And uh, I'll leave you with this last question. Do you, do you feel like you are as dark as your work? (laughs) And do you feel like, and and let me follow this up. You can answer that. And then here's a follow-up question. Do you feel like we are all in some ways as dark as your work? You know, I think people, if they meet me, would be surprised. I am a generally pretty happy person, uh, and I'm not scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I feel like it's it's common for all of us to carry around a little bit of darkness and a little bit of uh, that that sense with us. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think that's just life and. Uh, and this, I'm just using a way to express that, uh, but I think it's it's good. You know, you can't have the light without the darkness, and vice versa. So, it's normal and common, and uh, and yeah. So I think it's just it's kind of what we do with that that matters, and how we handle that. So, very good, well, Miranda Meeks. Thank you so much again for coming on. Yeah, thank you. It's been an honor. Mm-hmm.